Hello everybody, my name is Eric and today we're going to be talking about a new exploit that Google has found for Oracle VirtualBox. Now this works up to version 7.1.6, not the latest version, but this vulnerability was just disclosed and it was found very recently and it probably won't be in the change. So this is the version that fixed it and this is the version that had the problem. And all previous versions also likely have this problem. So what's wrong exactly? Well, let's see what Google thinks, and then I'm also going to try, I have tried the new OpenAI Codex thing, uh, which just came out, which is not just for coding, but they also say it can analyze and find bugs. So I wanted to see if it would be able to discover this bug automatically. Uh, of course, prompted with the right information, it would be easier than doing anything useful, but it would be an interesting stone. So let's see. An integer overflow vulnerability exists within VM. SVGA 3D surface MIP buffer size. That is a virtual box implementation of a VMware graphics device. As I have mentioned in my previous video about VM escapes, this is unfortunately how most, most of the time it's going to be the graphics device or another complicated piece of emulated hardware because there's just more that can go wrong. Intel and AMD's virtualization extensions are pretty much rock solid. The actual hypervisor that virtualizes the CPU is pretty much escape proof. The problem comes in with hardware that isn't covered by that and has to be emulated in software. So the attacker can then uh, take advantage of how low level memory allocation works in memory unsafe languages such that zero bytes are allocated while the program believes the buffer is bigger than that, meaning when the buffer is read, uh, data from somewhere else is going to be sent. That's essentially the key to this exploit. That can, of course, uh, be exploited, and they have now found a full chain that accesses the host memory and ultimately executes any code they want on the host, which is as bad as it gets. We were able to exploit the VM SVGA GBO inside of it. These are the structs that actually make the thing work. They allocate a surface, which is where the actual bug is, a buggy surface, and they allocate the GBO. And that's, I guess, so they can figure out where in memory they are, because they read into that, which points to something else in the host. That's kind of the, the key enabler here. You can allocate heap memory, and then they can ultimately break out all of memory randomization. If you've ever seen any of the videos where I use the debugger, you see that on modern versions of Windows, all of the memory addresses in a program are randomized so that you couldn't just jump to a piece of memory. But that doesn't stop you if you've uh, got the pointer to a different structure and they can just kind of walk around the function that way. And ultimately, this ends up, there ends up being a ROP chain. Remember the Call of Duty video that led to this disaster. So they get that. And now the now the LCE chain has executed, so there's trouble. There are a few other things they found they could do. Of course, on VirtualBox, the VM SVGA is the default uh, graphics adapter for Linux and is also often used on Windows guests, so this is quite a, a broad attack surface. So then, does this mean that testing malware on a virtual machine is now no longer safe? I don't think so, but I do think you have to be cautious. The reason this isn't likely to get exploited en masse in the wild it's finicky, right? You'd need to know what version your victim is using. You'd need to have a very good indication that whoever you wanted to target was using a VM. This could be a risk if you're taking malware by submission and they know a lot about your setup, but it's not going to be a risk for the common user. Simple reason why is it just doesn't make sense to have a bunch of hypervisor exploits built into your malware for every different hypervisor that exists. That's why it's not really seen, and going after people trying to analyze malware is not usually the goal. If they do detect hypervisors, they usually just terminate or act legit, rather than try to uh, take over, because that's not really going to help the core mission. So now let's see uh, if Codex has found this. The thing I have noticed, and I don't know if it's because VirtualBox has worse security, or if it being open source makes it easier to do this kind of research on, but it seems like most of these, or there are a lot of uh, VirtualBox vulnerabilities. So I don't use VirtualBox, but that's just a personal opinion. Like we can see this one from Pwn to Own from 2021, uh, and that was also VM SVGA. Might be worth trying to rewrite uh, this whole thing in something more secure. And then this one was actually uh, eventually worked its way out. Well, let's see what Codex has to say about this. 
So I asked it to look for vulnerabilities, especially related to integer overflow. I gave it the file and I gave it the core problem. Now it pretty quickly figured out, uh, it found the right function, right? If we remember, if we go back to the Google report, up, oh, it is this function. Uh, it has a guard on most multiplications, but the pitch computation is not guarded, which ultimately, because of how this is computed, means that that can escape to everything else. Now, we could try asking more about whether, um, if it can determine that out. This uh, program takes a while, so we'll just give that some time. It catches this unchecked multiplication, which ultimately turned into this uh, disaster. Now, whether there are other problems in this file yet to be found, we, we don't know yet. And that is the problem. They found this one, but there could be, there could be more trouble. And ideally, if these AI anal analysis tools can get better, that could be one countermeasure. But I think the key thing is minimizing the attack surface, writing as much as possible in memory-safe languages, uh, QEMU actually recently has added support for Rust. They're obviously not going to rewrite the whole thing in Rust, nor should they, but they're now going to have Rust extensions, so they might be able to move some of the riskier code, or at least the new code, uh, to Rust, which is one possible solution. Another one uh, that, of course, has its own drawbacks is using hardware features were never available, like in my VMs, uh, as you can see, because uh, everything you're watching right now is happening on a VM. Uh, or I use as much hardware as I can. So as we can see, uh, and this VM is special because it also has a real SSD. Most of my VMs do use an emulated drive, but this one actually, oh, if Task Manager will ever load, uh, has a physical SSD as a physical graphics code, which avoids some of these risks because, of course, the physical graphics code isn't going to... There's no emulation here. But that's not a, not a perfect uh, solution. It's basically impossible to break out of uh, Intel virtualization or AMD virtualization on the CPU. So it's just a matter of trying to minimize the actual risk of where the problems can be. Maybe it seems to get roughly the right idea here. Now, of course, it is being heavily prodded. So I, I don't think the technology for automatically finding all of these is necessarily ready yet. But it is a start. And I think in the long run, the existence of those kind of tools definitely creates a safety advantage for open source. Because, of course, the way I did that was I had to have the source code to feed. Uh, no automated security scanning is going to work without source. Now, of course, that also would make finding vulnerabilities more difficult. And maybe at some point we can actually see if we can get this to work with disassembly. But I thought that was kind of an interesting thing to add. So that's going to be all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments below what you uh, thought of this and about this and how you feel about the safety of virtual machines. Biggest tip I can give, update your VM software. Don't, don't be using out-of-date software. Definitely don't be using uh, illegitimately obtained VM software that you can't update. Not worth it. Uh, I recommend uh, for most people QEMU. Uh, with KVM. Uh, if you're on Windows, you can either use VMware or Hyper-V. Hyper-V is definitely more secure, uh, but VMware does have some nice features. That's all from me for now. Bye!